Family, have you ever met uh, believers that are so zealous for the Lord that every time you meet them, you're like, you, how do they do it? Allow me this morning to share their secret. So when we look at Ephesians uh, 5 verse 18, Paul says, uh, do not get drunk on wine, but be, which leads, leads to debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit of God, of course. So now, I believe out the answer for us to understand why certain believers are so zealous for the Lord, they, they are on fire, you know, set a fire in my soul, I want more of you, Lord. Those type of believers that whatever they do, you know, Christianity exudes from them. So I believe the answer lies in the scripture, Ephesians 5 verse 18, to not get drunk on wine. So now, family, what we need to understand, the new birth experience which we find in Christ does not automatically eliminate the habits or the tendencies, our proclivities to the things that we used to do before we got saved. Let's say you get saved at the age of 35, so there are certain things you used to do from the age of 15, you know? Uh, getting drunk on wine per se. So now you have proclivities that or habits that you Yeah, they are now part and parcel of you. So now when you get saved the new birth experience the born again experience does not automatically eliminate uh, Those proclivities. Yes, for some people the Holy Spirit does wonders, you know, the conviction is uh, On board whereby now the person the taste of alcohol or whatever um, They were doing gets eliminated from them, they start hating that with, with a passion. And yeah, that those people are, yeah, you know, I'd say, uh, per se. So now, as we continue, uh, so now, we need to understand that uh, our bodies are prone to sin. This dirt, this container, which encases uh, the Holy Spirit, the true you, because remember, man is the spirit uh, with the soul and possesses a body. So, it has tendency to sin because of what Adam did in the garden. So now, knowing that, how do I discipline my body? The answer is found in that scripture that we read, Ephesians 5.18, being filled with the Holy Spirit. So now, here's an interesting fact. Spirits do not have a legal right to operate on earth if they do not have a body. So that's why demons, they do demon possession. And yeah, that's why. But now, as we continue with our discourse for today, living lives that are full of the Spirit of God. So now, since our bodies are susceptible to sin, how do I, how do I discipline myself? One, we need to understand that a drunk person, <laughs> their speech is compromised, their walk will be compromised, their, their reasoning will be compromised. So now, looking at those three aspects that if you are full of the Holy Spirit, these three things, they also need to be influenced or compromised by the Holy Ghost, per se, you know? So now, as we look at uh, the Word of God today, so we say the speech will be compromised. So when you look at uh, Ephesians 4.29, Paul says, do not let any unwholesome words come from among you. So do not talk any type of language that is not of the kingdom. Why? Because when you look at Matthew uh, 12, 36, it says, uh, you will be held accountable for every idle word that we say. So now, knowing that, or, oh my goodness, since I'm a born again Christian, now that I'm a new kingdom citizen, every word, every idle word that you utter, you will be held accountable. That's what Matthew 12, 36 says. So now, your speech will be influenced or changed by you now being filled with the Holy Spirit that whenever you speak, you need to count your words, you know? The next aspect would be the walk. I think Psalms 1 says, Blessed are those who do not walk in the counsel of the wicked. Huh? So now, you will choose the company you keep. Once you know you start being filled by the Holy Spirit, you will choose the company, keep the places you go. You will not just walk anyhow because now you understand you are carrying the Holy Spirit in you. So wherever you go, you are taking the Spirit of God there. Or whatever company you keep, you are taking Him there. So this will be an abomination of desecration, of desolation. Imagine the sin and the filth that you would be doing with, yeah, in the presence 
of the Holy Spirit since he is inside you. Greater is he that is in you than the one that is in the world. He's inside you. So that as we continue, the reasoning aspect also will be affected. I think it's poses as a child. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. Uh, I, taught, I reasoned like a child. But when I became a man, I had to pull childish things aside. So now, the process of being filled with the Holy Spirit, you become a man or you mature in, in the walk with the Lord. So your thinking will change. You will not think of things of this world or you would not be yeah, focused on things of this world but you will think of things of high, the higher plane. Yes, of course, we need to acquire things that we need to acquire so that the kingdom or the gospel can be taken to the people. But our focus, our minds will be on the things of God. We would not be affected by trivia things yeah, that are happening around us. As much as we know that when we, we seek the kingdom, all these things will be added, you know, so that we do not uh, behave like pagans. As uh, Jesus Christ said. So as we continue, listen to the undertone. When you read Ephesians 5 verse 18, listen to the undertone. Uh, yeah, yeah, Paul. He says, be filled. Huh? Be filled with the Spirit. He's not making a recommendation. He, he's giving an instruction. That's a command. Be filled with the Spirit. He's not saying, uh, if yeah, if it, it, it would be nice or if you could. No, 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 no. He's giving an instruction for every believer that for us to operate with this type of zeal that those believers that whenever they speak, they speak the, the word of God, that there's no unwholesome talk among them. Whenever they go, they are able to admonish and edify one another with the word of God. This is why. He says, be filled with the Holy Ghost, with the Spirit of God. It's a command. It's not a suggestion. So as we continue, Matthew 5, 16 says, Blessed are those that hunger and thirst after righteousness. They will be filled. So the question this morning is, how hungry are you? How thirsty are you for righteousness? So when you wake up in the morning, is the word of God the first thing on your mind? Is God's presence in your life the first thing in your mind? Or throughout the day, are you feeling? Yes, you, you, you are conducting your your regular job, whatever you're doing, you're handling your business, but you are handling it from perspective of the word of God as we continue. So now, how do I get filled with the spirit? So now, one method or yeah, the method that I use or that I've learned about is quiet time. Jesus Christ used to separate himself from his disciples early in the morning and go pray. This was him communing with God, you know? So now, the three things that I truly you, you will be doing in that uh, quiet time of yours, hey, mind you, in education, Jesus Christ used to do it in the morning. You might also want to do it in the morning. So now, three things. One, you'd be uh, repent. That's the first thing. Repent. Uh, I, I think this is why David was called a man after God's own heart, if I'm not mistaken. He was called a man after God's own heart because he had a repentant heart, you know. He, he, no matter how many times he messed up, he would repent and run back to God and say, you know what, I messed up, please forgive me. So now, that's the type of attitude we need to have, that we repent on a daily basis, ask God to forgive us our transgressions. So that's the first part of uh, your quiet time. And then praying and worshipping. Those two elements, yeah, they tend to work together when you pray. Remember that when you pray, you are speaking, right? When you worship, this is you communing with God. When you look at Genesis 3 verse 8, it says God came down uh, and then he was walking around in the garden. And then Adam and Eve, they heard him and then they hid because they were afraid. But now when you look at that part, he came down and he was walking around in the garden. This implies he had a tendency to commune or to communicate, had a fellowship with uh, Adam and Eve. So now, I believe God is the same God from the beginning, even now. He still wants to commune, wants to come down to us and have a fellowship with each and every one of his children. So now we need to set aside that time where you're going to pray and worship and commune with him. So now the last aspect would be reading and or meditating on the word of God. Remember we said when you pray, you are the one speaking. When you read the word of God, that's God speaking, family. So now in that commune of yours, 
now you allow God an opportunity to speak into your life. Because when you read the Word of God, we, we believe that the Word of God was written and inspired by the Holy Spirit, right? So that each and every scripture is God ordained. So now, when you look at the book of James, James 1, 22 to 24, uh, let's, read it. let's read it, family. It says, James 1, 22 to 24, Do not merely listen to the word, and so deceive yourself. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what he says is like someone who looks at his face in the mirror and after looking at him himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. So after you've meditated and you've prayed and you've repented and then you read the word of God, so the book of James says you must do what the word of God says. You must do what the word of God says because if you don't, you are like a man who looks into a mirror. Immediately after walking away, you forget what you, what you look like. So the word of God is a reflection of you, where you fall short, where you need to improve your progress, your relationship with God, that will be the word of God as you read it, you will see man. Now you know certain things in the kingdom. Now the old man is dying. Slowly but surely, the old man is dying. This is what uh, the symbolic gesture where now you get baptized. This is where you are burying the old you and the new you is going to be resurrected in Christ. Do you know? So now, that's what I wanted to bring your attention. Living lives that are full of the Spirit, it's going to be a consistent daily repetition. So now, consistency and repetition is going to be key here. So for you to kill the old you, the habits, the old tendencies, your proclivities, you would have to be consistent with these new habits that you'll be developing. Quiet time, praying, repenting, attending church services, you know, all those things that come with being a believer. So now, the old you would be dying and the new you in this process will be resurrected with Christ. So now that's what I wanted to bring to your attention, family.